ever notice how the most important stories get the least amount of coverage in the media these days? It is alarming to see that trend. Now, we have wall-to-wall -wall coverage on matters that should be focused on the least, like holding the local government election. Why do we need it? Because the JVP and the SJB think that they can win. So naturally, for them, it's essential. And they are telling you and me that we should care as well. Uphold democracy, they say. Don't touch the rights of the people to vote, they say. But the biggest story that is getting the least amount of attention and is not discussed, sought after, or even recognized by the mainstream media is the story we all need to focus on. Unfortunately, it's happening right under our noses. And thanks to our politicians, it's been swept under the rug once again, just as it has been done for more than 75 years. Right now, our leaders are praying to the IMF gods to come out of this economic crisis, which most of them put us there. The gods are somewhat answering. They don't want to answer our prayers just yet because they need to milk more out of our miserable situation and uh, tie us further towards a vagabond state. Is anyone asking what will happen once we get the bailout package? Is it going to create better conditions for you and me? Will the inflation go down? Can we afford essential goods at a bearable price? Will the unfair taxes be fixed? The reality of that, sadly, it would not. But there is one thing the IMF bailout will guarantee. Access to money markets. What does that mean? It means more borrowing. The government, be it this one or anyone for that matter, will once again be able to borrow as they please. Why? Because the IMF is guaranteeing the creditors to go ahead and give more money to this country. And our debt, currently hovering around $60 billion, will double, triple and quadruple. But what was that line the liberals used to say during the unrest last year? Oh yes. We've become a nation of borrowers, borrowed so much, and now we are paying the price. If only we could exchange liberal minds for dollars, then at least we have more dollars and less of the liberal nonsense. It's true that for us to stay afloat at this moment, we may have to borrow. That is a fact. But that borrowing should create new money be reinvested, not be added to the expenses of this country. Right now, our leaders only have a one-trick pony as a solution, the IMF. They are religiously following a cult mentality. A few years back, when these very same proposals were implemented and uh, affected us in the negatory, the SLPP, the Sri Lanka Pudujana Peramuna, was dead against it and rose to the occasion to be the voice of the people. It only took three years, and they are also now chanting praises of the very organization they detested. Isn't this what a cult is? See, right now, our leaders need to be inspiring us to find solutions to this problem through mechanisms of our own. It is not groundbreaking stuff we need to do uh, in order to escape off this crisis. It's pretty simple. If it's a dollar crisis, we must find ways to sell our products overseas in order to find that dollars. If we don't have enough investments, we must increase middle income investments via our local entrepreneurs. If we don't have the goods we need, then we have to push ourselves to manufacture them here rather than looking to import them. Honestly, in our governing structure, we don't have leaders. All that we have is a bunch of selfish morons. For 75 years, they have managed to fool each and every one of us, and they have lived a lavish life. Isn't it our time to live that lavish life? If that's the case, we can't apply the same uh, theories and strategies we used in the past 75 years that got us to this point. So we have to start thinking afresh. I will be right back.